Are you ready for some more holiday decorating? Well, I have plenty for you today. I'm going to create an elegant beaded garland. We are going to drape it on the corner of my entryway mirror. We're also going to be making some paper ornaments, cute Christmas gift boxes, and I'm going to show you how to create a scenery of Christmas trees in apothecary jars. And then we're going to display all of these pieces together to create a gorgeous tabletop display. My video is sponsored by Cricut. Entryway decor gives a small glimpse into what the overall feeling and decor style is going to be in your home. So I love decorating on a grand scale. that grand feeling we are going to start off at the tippity top of this mirror and we're going to make a garland and drape it over the top I began by placing some command hooks above the mirror one on either corner of the mirror next I got a pine garland and I weaved a string of Christmas lights through the garland and then I got some floral wire and I cut some segments off and I put the floral wire at the end of one part of the garland and about a third of the way from one of the ends. I wrapped that wire around the garland and then I hung it on the command hooks. Now, do you remember the fireplace mantle we did not too long ago? I did it in an asymmetrical style. I used gold beaded garland to accentuate the shape. I loved it so much, I wanted to mimic that on my mirror. Not only do I love the shape, but recreating that design ties the two spaces together. So I took the end of the gold beaded garland and I wrapped a pine branch around the end. I made a small dip in the garland and then attached it back up to the pine garland about two thirds of the way across the top garland. I made a second dip and attached it to the top corner. I created several rows of beaded garland dips to create a luxurious sparkly design. Just like in my fireplace garland, I'm going to be creating some bows to add in the places that everything is connected because we don't wanna see where things are connected so we can hide them through placing these bows over the top. So I created these bows and I placed them right where the gold beaded garland connects to the pine garland. Then I added a variety of poinsettias, some gold berries, gold and crystal gems and hung them by the fishing lines so they look like they're floating. And then of course, a variety of ornaments. I created these paper ornaments on my Cricut Maker. I'm using a cardstock. Cricut has a big variety of cardstock. I chose a white cardstock to make my ornaments out of. In my Cricut Design Space, I hit new project. I clicked on images. In the search bar, I typed in snowflake. And then on the operation type, I clicked cut only. Several options came up. I scrolled down and I selected two ornaments. I did a round one and I did a coordinating cylinder ornament. I selected them both and hit add to canvas. In my design space, I clicked on the first round one and I went over and hit duplicate. I wanted eight of them, so I hit duplicate enough to get eight. And then for the more slender ornament, I clicked on it and again, I hit duplicate so I could get eight ornaments. Once my ornaments were made, I hit make it. It sorted it onto my mats. So I'm going to be doing it on the mat. I clicked save and then I clicked continue. And in my materials selection, I'm doing this on a cardstock. So I selected that and then more on the pressure. I loaded my cardstock into my Cricut Maker by hitting the flashing arrow button, and then I hit the flashing play button to begin the cutting process. When my ornaments were 100% done cutting, I unloaded my material by hitting the flashing arrow button, and then I went directly back to my computer. I did the second ornament. I'm still using the same white cardstock, and then I hit more on the pressure. Again, I loaded my material into my Cricut Maker by hitting the flashing arrow button, and then I began the cutting process by hitting the play button. 
Once this was 100% done cutting, I unloaded my material by hitting that flashing arrow button. And then I went back to my computer and I hit finish. I simply peeled back the cardstock from the ornament and then I gently peeled the ornaments off the mat. I did this with both of my ornament designs. I love how these two designs complement each other and resemble lace. Once I had my ornaments peeled off, all I had to do was get an ornament hook, put it through the hole at the top of the paper ornament and hang it on my garland and on my mini tree. These ornaments are a perfect addition because they bring in white, which I am decorating in a winter white, so it brings in that white color and it just finishes off the garland and the tree beautifully. I can't even tell you how much I love this garland. It is so striking. It draws your eye upward and it makes this foyer space feel grand. Next up, let's decorate this foyer table. We're gonna start off by making our Christmas tree forest. In my kitchen, I created a centerpiece with apothecary jars and bottle brush Christmas trees. Again, to tie these two pieces together, I'm going to be recreating that look in a similar way on my foyer table. I had some gorgeous apothecary jars in a variety of sizes, and I filled them with some Epsom salt. I love using Epsom salt because it really does look like snow, and I got a giant bag at Target for only $4.99, and I've used it pretty much everywhere, so I've definitely gotten my money out of this Epsom salt. I poured a bit of this Epsom salt into the bottom of each one of my jars, and then I placed a bottle brush tree in the center. In this short round jar, I placed in a, a mini cupcake stand, and then I put in a snow globe that I created last Christmas. And finally, I added two small trees. Like my kitchen jars, these jars are gonna get a bow wrapped around the top as well. I created some bows and I left some long tails. The difference between my kitchen jars and my foyer jars, because the foyer is a little more formal, I'm going to add a beautiful sparkly crystal ornament to each one of my jars. I placed two of my jars on top of a marble tray and the larger one is just right on the table. And then I got two small dollar tree cloches that I spray painted gold and then put some of that bling wrap around the base. And inside of those, I have another bottle brush tree and some more Epsom salt snow. One of my favorite family treasures are these Christmas lists that my husband and I wrote when we were children. I get them out every year and just love them. So these are my treasures. They are gonna take center stage on this table. I placed my husband's framed Christmas list on top of a gift wrapped box. And I wanted to add some more gift boxes. And I know that Cricut has some awesome options. So I went to my Cricut design space and I created some more boxes there. In my Cricut design space, I hit new project. I clicked on images. In the search bar, I typed in gift box, and on the operation type, I did cut only. Several options came up. I clicked on this one and hit add to canvas. I selected my box and went to size and put in the size that I needed. Once it was sized appropriately, I hit make it. It sorted it onto my mats and I am doing it on the mat. I clicked save and then I clicked continue. Now we're going to be selecting our materials. My material wasn't on the main page because I'm using a mixed materials in a gold party foil. 
So I had to browse all materials and in the search bar, I typed in party foil and it came up. I selected it and then I hit save. I clicked more on the pressure to load my material. I clicked the flashing arrow button and then to begin the cutting process, I hit that flashing play button. It loaded it into my Cricut Maker and began cutting it. Once it was 100% done cutting, I unloaded my material by hitting that flashing arrow button. And now I have the scallop detail for my box. I went directly back to the computer screen and selected my cardstock that was gonna be my box. And then I did more on the pressure. I loaded my cardstock into my Cricut Maker by hitting that flashing arrow button and then hit the flashing play button which began the cutting process. Once it was 100% done cutting, I unloaded this mat by hitting the flashing arrow button, and then I hit finish on the computer. I peeled away the excess cardstock from around the box, and then I gently peeled the box off of the mat. I did the same thing with my party foil. I simply removed the excess and then peeled the scallop detail off of the mat. Then I began to fold my box. There are these little cut marks along the edges where you're supposed to fold it, so it was really easy to create. I hot glued the edges of the boxes together. That way they would stay in place. And then I hot glued the scalloped gold foil piece right underneath the lip of the box. Finally, I wrapped a white and gold ribbon around the box this ribbon will tie these gift boxes in with the jars. These cute little boxes are the perfect addition to this tablescape. They add some fun interest and they really tie into the whole Christmas list idea because a gift and a Christmas list go together. On the end of my foyer table, I'm going to be adding a thrifted Christmas tree that I got last year. Again, I'm filling it with the same things that I put on my garland. It's got those gorgeous ornaments. It's got some ribbons, some berries, some poinsettias. And at the top, I have this gorgeous mercury mirrored glass Christmas star. It adds the sparkle and the sheen that this display needs. It also ties in with all of the crystals and it reflects those beautiful Christmas lights back into the room. Also, having this tree here adds balance to this wall. Because we have this huge garland that only goes on half of the mirror, we have the other straight line right here that's vacant. So by adding a tall piece on this side, it tricks your eye into thinking that everything is cohesive and balanced. The way this entire foyer wall looks with the table and the mirror and the garland and everything is one of my favorite foyer looks that I've ever done. It feels elegant and grand. It sets the tone for what's going to be expected in the rest of the home and at night, with the sparkly Christmas lights shining, it just looks magical. Having Christmas lights up that high on the wall brings a glow into the space. By coordinating the design pieces with the rest of my holiday decorations, it makes the entire decor throughout the house feel cohesive. I hope you enjoyed this transformation in creating these DIY decorations with me today. If you're looking for a more Christmas decorating inspiration, I have an entire playlist. I will leave a link to that in my description box and I will also leave it in my pinned comments. We are almost done Christmas decorating. The only room that we have left to do is the dining room. So that will be next and then we're gonna do a full house tour. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for all those upcoming videos. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching.